decided to um, look into deploying a network for the Internet of Things. And uh, of the technologies available, I think at that time, Sigfox and LoRa were primarily the, the most advanced in terms of its development, its deployment possibilities. Um, when we looked at both um, um, and the technology and the, how, it, how it works, we found that Sigfox would provide um, um, better coverage due to the data rate and the way it's used. Um, so, for example, within, um, it will, I mean, RF is a bit of a black magic um, and it depends on the topography of the environment where you're installing, but um, you can get several miles um, of communication from one device up to the base station um, using the technology of Sigfox. Um, so that was a very big plus side because the amount of base stations you then need to install, for example, in rural areas would be lower than what we had to install, for example, for LoRa. Um, within built-up environments, um, the, of course, you still need to have a much larger uh, population of base stations. However, the sensitivity on the receiver um, um, at the base station and because of the uh, nature of the RF transmission is slightly higher than LoRa, so you, again, you get better um, uh, transmission so rates. So what's the average battery life? You know, if you're putting a sensor in a remote location, it could be uh, you know, structural health monitoring um, for a pipeline that's uh, you know, in the North Atlantic, I don't know, uh, up in Alaska somewhere. You really don't want to be sending engineers out to, to replace batteries. Yes. So if you've got a Sigfox network and a LoRa network, we're talking about 20 years. Between, yes. Or maybe you, you don't even need a battery at all. You need energy harvesting, you know, solar power. Yeah. Um, you've got those uh, kind of, move, you know, they can charge the sensor using movement in some yeah. cases. So how so do they compare LoRa versus Sigfox? Fairly similar um, in terms of battery usage. Um, from what we've seen so far, uh, I see that uh, the way the, the, the transmit, because the way it transmits the signal, um, Sigfox is slightly more efficient. However, I'm not saying that LoRa is not good in, in that respect, um, uh, but because the uh, signal is uh, transmitted over a smaller band of free, a smaller bandwidth, um, you need less, for example, additional coding within the signal, so it's just a burst, um, uh, and then it goes to sleep again. Um, the way it's also designed to receive downlink messages, it's very efficient in terms of its network management and when it sends a downlink message back. So even when a device, for example, requests a downlink message, um, it goes back to sleep for um, up to 30 seconds until it wakes up at the right time to listen for a message which is um, addressed to that particular device. Um, so. They're fairly similar. I think it's slightly more efficient on the Sigfox end, but not by much. Um, then, of course, it also depends on the size of the battery you're going to use, for example, but also if you're going to have an additional processor. Um, uh, and we've seen these I mean, over the last few years some very efficient processors and, uh, out in the market. Um, uh, Who's so making those, those processors? Their systems on the chips, but what, Qualcomm? Who are the market leaders right now? Um, um, the, the most we've seen on devices which are on the network are um, uh, based on ARM. Um, uh, and um, Which is now SoftBank, of course. We've now, got a yeah. question for you real quick. Um, I'll hand you over. Uh, hi, Simon. Um, I just wanted to ask, what kind of pricing model can we expect? Uh, what um, uh, so, I think, I'm not really... Pricing asking. model, based, yeah. on, based on what? I'm not probably the right person to answer that, but um, uh, Sigfox offer, offer different uh, pricing models depending on volumes and depending on the number of messages you're going to send. Off the, out of the, off the top of my head, if I remember correctly, there's four structure, uh, four bands of um, message transmissions per day, starting from the very basic, where you send um, up to two a day to 50 messages, 100, and a maximum of 140 per day. Um, and then it depends on the volumes. Um, but the idea is that it will make it um, a lot cheap to, to run. Unfortunately, I don't have the figures off the top of my head, and uh, I'm probably not the best person to ask in terms of pricing. 
I know that it depends on how much usage you're going to have. Um, but I mentioned also the 140 messages maximum per day. Um, that's due to the um, regulations of operating within the ISM band because and the number of transmissions you can do per hour hence it equates to 140 and that allows also for downlink messages then. Any other questions? Just a minute. Let's get the, uh, the mic. Yeah. Okay, see, I need, I need this uh, audio for the live stream. There you go. Hi, sorry, it's, it's kind of just tied into that question, but if, you, and maybe you can give exactly, but can you give any indicative sort of pricing about that upper message uh, cost and how it might compare to maybe uh, uh, SIM contracts you might get at the moment sort of per month? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the answer, but um, uh, what we could do is if you can hand the details over to Simon, we can get back to you with regards to that. I'm, I'm afraid I really don't know the answer to that. Um, I would have to refer to my commercial colleagues regarding that. I just It just seems to me like there's a cultural divide between these kind of dynamic startups like Sigfox that have gone the route of uh, raising a ton, and they're going to need it, of VC funding. I think yes. Sigfox uh, closed the largest uh, VC round in French history. What was it, 150 million bucks? Yeah. I'm not even sure. Like I, I said, they're going to need that and a lot more in order to deploy this network and remain competitive. And you've got the sort of open source standards. And really, um, you know, IoT NB uh, is a, a kind of an effort of the incumbents, you know, the... the uh, the guys who come from a tradition of um, yeah, the SIM, embedding SIM cards, 3G, 4G, 5G, and they're trying now to get in on the act. Do you think those guys, those sort of uh, the narrow band, band IoT consortium or consortii have, fall, have kind of missed the, the initiative, are kind of missing out to Laura and Sigfox and Ingenue and so on? Um, uh, the new kids on the block, as it were. Yeah, um, going back to what you said about the uh, uh, VCs raised, and um, I believe some folks are going to a next round also um, of funding because um, they have quite a lot of global ambitions. And um, in some countries, they're deploying the network themselves. In places like the UK, um, we partnered with them and we're deploying the network in the UK. Um, um, I think. Um, Fairly excited to be honest with the with the release of this pack for narrowband IoT and LTEM because I think yes it came a bit too late I think they were more focused um, uh, on deploying 4G and getting up and running with the um, um, getting some specifications for 5G in place and what Sigfox and Laura have done is try to get ahead of the curve in terms of their network deployment. Um, I, th I believe that narrowband IoT and LTEM would be complementary. They won't necessarily try to kill off Sigfox and LoRa because um, their use base will probably be different applications. Um, um, there are statements from Vodafone and Huawei, for example, who are very pushing very hard on narrowband IoT that they will take over what Sigfox and LoRa are trying to address the market for. But I believe they'll be complementary to each other. Um, um, it's just the last thing we need is more standards. I know. Standards, standards, I know. standards. It's what ki it's killing the industry. I know. We've got to and agree on it uh, on the best of breed for yeah. each individual application and stick with it because otherwise this but Betamax, what? you know, VHS nightmare is going to continue. Do you have any more questions? I think we're going to wrap things up fairly soon. Okay. I mean, the other thing I want to add is. At least if even if at least for example the radio side has different standards when you get to receiving the data from those objects at least if we can have a set of um, um, standardized, standardized methods to accept that data process and then present it to an application then at least maybe if we have that bit there is some benefit to that and for example hypercat or um, uh, one of the consortiums who are uh, trying to achieve that, but yeah, it remains. Again, to be seen. BT Hypercat is yet another smart city yes. initiative, yet another standard. Yeah. Do we really need that? We'll see. We'll see. Anyhow, um, very early days. Thank you so much for your talk. Really appreciated it. And I think we're going to wrap things up okay. and uh, have a few drinks and a little bit of networking. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Good evening. Thanks, Simon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Um, that was quite heavy, quite sort of uh, niche, shall we say? Which I, I, I'm fascinated by low, low uh, LP1 personally because I follow it, but I can understand how people would just switch off completely. And uh, you have the slides over and Yeah, absolutely. Do you have um, a card or anything? No, I'm sorry. Huh? I can bring it. Okay, great. Very good. Very good. Right, let's have some beers. Um, I'm going to stick around here for sure. Uh, I don't think that many of us are going to be going to a, a, a bar or a pub because of the hackathon. I know that Alan is kind of obligated to remain in the building for the foreseeable future. Um, to remain with the, the hackathon. But, uh, yeah. So Sergio, what are you working on? Are you working on something quite interesting? Grab drinks, guys, by the way. And we've got some sandwiches over here. So open a window, Simon. I'll, I'll do it, James. I'll I don't know. This place is like a bunker with all this concrete. You don't have air con, do you? We don't. So if you have 20 grand spare, then we would, we would get it. Of course it. I do. Where do you, how do you want it? Cash? Check? We take gold. Gold bars. Gold bars. Some gold bullion. Yeah. Bitcoin? Uh, we do actually take Bitcoin. Excellent. I need to get one of those Bitcoin for